Hello and welcome to Bowtie Gardens. This is uh, Bowtie Dave. I'm standing out here in front of the uh, wooden entrance to the back gardens. And uh, we're about to do a garden tour of the outer gardens in the backyard. On the way in there, I wanted to go through the blueberries. The way I have, normally we just go right through this gate right here, but I wanted to go through the blueberries because it's just very impressive how many blueberries are ripening in there and I will harvest as much as I can the birds can have the rest and it's okay because there are so many blueberries in there it's crazy crazy <laughs> so anyway um, this is my own personal log of the things that are going on in the garden uh, you'll notice there's a lot of indexing in the uh, description below that's what makes the chapters for these videos uh, I do that for myself but you are welcome to join along if you're just stumbling along finding this channel uh, please subscribe because we do a lot of continuous garden tours uh, at the end of every single month. We do a, we're doing a three-part garden tour this month, and that's what I'm trying to do every month. We do uh, live amidst uh, two airports, four Air Force bases, and a heliport. <laughs> but uh, so there is a, could be a lot of uh, air traffic through here. Uh, it's typically not too bad on the camera. You can hear me over the helicopter quite okay. But uh, anyway, we are going to go through and look at some of the changes in the um, outer gardens of the backyard. And uh, the front yard, lots of things happening and lots of things growing. Uh, let's just go see what's happening back there. Here we go. Hi, I'm Bowtie Dave. So just by way of reference, here's the back of the citrus trees in the side yard. These are all blueberries. And the blueberries are becoming ripe. There are so many ready blueberries in here. It is amazing. Uh, these things are mm, tasty. Mm. I just wanted to walk through here toward the bees. And uh, you notice in the little segment I did before the opening sequence, uh, I did change my hat. I am wearing a black hat now, but look at this just inundation of ripe blueberries everywhere. And we're walking through past the second bush on the left, second bush on the right. A little bit of vines growing up through here. I did, I took a whole bunch of this vines out yesterday, in fact. But there's still some in here. I didn't quite get all. Man, let's look at all the blueberries. Tons and tons of blueberries today. And tomorrow is going to be the heaviest harvest days. And of course, there's more blueberries here. Just all kinds of ripe. And over there are the raised beds. We'll get to those in the next part. Another bush over here. And here we come up on the bee box. And I'm not going to get too very close. They are a little bit uh, protective of their space as the blueberries are developing. Uh, they seem to get a little more and a little more protective. But uh, let's go look over here at the uh, Churchill Oak first. Actually, the first thing we need to look at is the blackberries. We're starting to harvest a few blackberries. You might have seen the picture of four ounces of blackberries I put in the freezer already. Pomegranates are looking beautiful. Um, it was about this time last year I started to bag them, and I think I probably should bag some. I think I bagged about 200 of them last year. But uh, this one, this pomegranate right here is really growing them. This pomegranate over here is not growing as many. It does have a few. There's one right up there on the end of a branch. Um, I think there's a one or two up in this little mess right in here. But I had not been getting water to it. Uh, as well as I am now, so I'm hoping it gets better. So, of course, my little mountain mint. The uh, goji berry underneath here is not blooming. However, that is in sharp contrast to the other goji berry bush that you'll see at the end of the raised garden bed tour. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of pomegranates developing up in here. 
I'm looking up through here. I'm seeing a few flowers right now. Last year, this was a very rich area of pomegranates as well as this. I don't see as many. Maybe they'll come later. Okay, back around to the blueberries. The bee box is right over there. And I have a pile of grow bags here that are waiting to be planted up with something. Yeah, they have a mess of stuff in it, but uh, we'll, we'll get those cleaned up and refertilize. I know potatoes are going to go in a couple of them and maybe some hot peppers in places. But anyway, the church elope or the cathedral elope, calling it that because it's the shape of a cathedral, uh, and it's even facing as the people are sitting in the, the uh, nave. In fact, let me come around here. Still have a tarp sitting here i need to get cleaned up but as we're sitting here looking through and there's a transept across there we're facing east which is the proper way to be facing in a church but uh yeah so oh look at this fella hey buddy i'm ready for my close-up mr deville boy he is posing for us look at that guy he is pretty looking Okay, enough of the local wildlife. So I'm gonna get cantaloupe planted in here. I don't know if it's gonna happen before my trip or not, but uh, you will notice in the middle up here, the altar is actually the, the bees bath and it is full of water. This is what it looks like every other day. It gets a little low, but the bees will come in here and feed on this water uh, every day. They like this. Zinnias all through the church elope here. Uh, there's some grass in here that I need to do something with. But over here to the left in the outer bed, uh, of course, there is a fig tree right here. Uh, still trying to figure out what to do with this fig tree. We have a nice leader going up right here, uh, right there. And we have a side shoot down here, which probably should be cut back. I just haven't had the heart to do it yet. So the other fig tree is looking really good. We looked at the fig tree in the front yard. This one is actually taller than the fig and the tree in the front yard. And you can see there's figs growing here. This is, this is uh, about full size of the figs that grow in this type. There's another one over there. Um, but uh, the leaves are enormous, so plenty of energy getting soaked up. And uh, you may have seen the little video. I've got this thing what I think is perfectly trimmed. Uh, I've got a central leader and I have four uh, side leaders. Oh, there's an extra one over there that I didn't get off. That one should come off, but because it's gonna rub against right here. Anyway, go back in this corner. We, I did not get the big uh, pot that's, the big plastic pot that's down there. The elephant ears are looking amazing though looking enormous and I'm not sure what this weed is right in here but there's a lot of it we need to get that pot out of here so I can mow through here so anyway the uh, right next to the cathedral lope we have more zinnias here and again deadheading this, those zinnias uh, you just taking these whenever you see these dead flowers and breaking them open like that and you can see all those seeds those are all seeds and let's see the wind is blowing that way so I'm going to just spread it through here you can see they're just falling randomly and those will get watered in with the rain or whatever we've had some really interesting weather uh, past a uh, few weeks it's been sunny most days with with most days having a afternoon rainstorm which is kind of cool but uh, been, it's been making for good weather. This uh, black area, this is um, part of where the uh, loquat hedge is going over this direction. Uh, this one lemon tree is the one surviving lemon tree. I cannot find a graft point on it. And so I think these green things coming up, which this tree is now getting watered by a little irrigation head right there. But I think these are going to bring this tree back, I'm hoping. Uh, I cannot find a graph point. If, it, if there is a graph point, I think it might be right there below these shoots. So I am really hoping that this thing will come back. We'll have to see. It'll be our lone surviving lemon tree. 
if it does. But down here we have uh, dark zucchini planted in four holes and those are getting watered. There's, I direct seeded those. So hopefully those will be back, be coming up here soon and hopefully hitting the holes. I know those holes are a little small, but I've, those seeds are directly below those holes. Uh, I do believe we've lost another pomegranate over here. This thing is not looking well. So I'm losing pomegranates left and right, but that's okay because I'm growing more. Uh, the ligustrum has not been trimmed in quite a while and uh, it looks quite uh, prolific and not much to say about that really. It's pretty big. I just need to trim that back. Uh, over here, um, I am hoping to plant watermelon up this trellis and you'll notice I've got the grass cut around here so it kind of looks somewhat presentable and uh, I want to grow just on either side. I'm actually tempted to turn this thing 90 degrees because the sun comes up this way and goes down that way. So I don't know. I know it's it should be facing this way, the, 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 the archway. So we'll have to see. Um, the jasmine is taking off. However, uh, the oak tree is shooting out branches and it is just prolific. There's lots and lots of branches growing up this thing. I'm going to have to clean this thing again. Uh, I did a video, I did a short on that a while back, and you can see it's doing it again, which I expected. Um, so it's about a month later, and it needs it again. Uh, this pile of firewood here, we'll have to take care of eventually. Um, I am looking at some way to store firewood, and, then, and there's a short that I think I'm going to use or not a short, but a video I, I did about a very clever way to um, store firewood. And uh, I'll do, see if I can put a link in the upper right-hand corner of the screen here. If you have, if you're on a device that takes cards, or I'll put it, and I'll put it in the description. But uh, we're going to eventually clear this. This is where I would be planting my corn, uh, but it's obviously not here. So another uh, citrus tree. This is a Satsuma orange tree, and I have been fighting off the uh, little bit of ivy growing in the base down there, but uh, it is trying to come back. And it gets it has an irrigation head right here that's committed to this area, and uh, gets good irrigation. So hopefully, and, and and we have some more dying back here. You can see how the branch, this branch here, is dark, and then it gets lighter down here. It's died somewhere right in this area, right in here. So. Um, needs to be cut off again. It's becoming discouraging because all this green growth and then there's split bark down in here, which is uh, kind of discouraging, but there's even new growth down lower. And I'm beginning to wonder if I should just have cut it all the way down because that bark was not split when uh, I did the cutting before. Just have to see what survives. The um, Egyptian walking onion patch there's some weeds over here on this side that need to get taken out, but it's growing strong. It is really growing strong. You can see the uh, these onion heads are just very prolific. Another pomegranate tree here with uh, suffering parts, but I see more ivy in there. I took ivy off this plant already. I need to keep an eye on this one. Try not to lose yet another, but uh, that's that pot back there has the uh, my one of my more productive lemon trees that died. Uh, the pomegranate here, another pomegranate's there, two of them. And I haven't touched those at all, so that but they seem to be producing, so I'm not going to bother with them this year. Um, rosemary, looking strong. More chocolate mint, big pot of aloe. But nothing, none of this aloe is gonna probably bloom this year. It's kind of getting late in the season, but that uh, that freeze really kind of put a heart, put the hurt on this. Uh, this is where the other two lemon trees were that died, and I haven't done anything with them. I'm more observing than anything else right now, but I don't expect anything to come out of them. So some spearmint, 
another pot. Now this was my favorite pot of aloe because it, its blooms were a different color than all the other aloe we have. But uh, I think it's going as well. But there's another chocolate mint down in there. We got to going to have to uh, start populating out our peppermint, which is somewhere around here. Loquat hedge trees. These are looking just amazingly strong, beautiful leaves, uh, just looking like they're supposed to. Compost. Last item down here, I think. I'm looking around trying to remember if there's anything else here. Uh, compost. Um, this bin is full. This bin is full. I still have not flipped this older bin yet. And I'm going to have to do something with these wood chips and this compost because I want to flip it into there. So that will eventually happen. So anyway, not a lot, not a whole lot going on in the outer beds right now. I'm a little disappointed in the fact that I hadn't got um, the watermelon up yet or uh, cantaloupe. It's just been one task after another and just you just got to take it one step at a time in the garden so that's what I'm doing and it'll get there so watermelon and I know they'll 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 they grow fast and I want to get them up that trellis real good and we'll have to see what happens so anyway that's the outer beds and all the excitement that's going on there and we do have the raised beds coming up next uh, so be sure and subscribe to, to follow along with the next part of our May Garden Tours. And uh, seeing what's happening there, there's a few new things going on in the, in the raised garden beds. If you don't watch our videos, uh, that there's, there's stuff happening there. But uh, I can't remember if it's already come out by the time this is, this is out or not, but uh, we did feed our tomato plants because they're starting to bloom. And I talk about what I feed and why, but uh, it's about uh, 85 degrees out here today and um, a little humid. I'm a little exhausted because of a long week and we're just kind of be bopping along, but uh, lizards are jumping around me. They're, they're getting their bugs. Oh, what was that? That was a leaf. <laughs> I'm a little jumpy. Anyway, there comes a little bit of wind. We still have these uh, beautiful blue skies. We do have some uh, uh, possibility of a little subtropical rainstorm come through here in a few hours. So I'm going to try to get the uh, raised garden bed tour recorded before, uh, before that happens. I don't think it'll be a problem. I've got a few hours if it happens. Uh, we do have the dust and weather bubble uh, you know, so many places have little unique things. You might be behind a mountain or you might be in the middle of a high plain or you or you got a bay or a large bay around you or, or a great lake or something and it affects the weather in your specific area and what it does for us, the water that surrounds us on three sides. Uh, Destin is kind of on a peninsula with, uh, in, as far, okay, so that Destin is like a, on a peninsula. Yeah, like this. <laughs> And you've got the Choctahatchee, finally said it right, the Choctahatchee Bay across the north and the channel and then the Gulf of Mexico below it. And Destin is, is right here on the, the, uh, this peninsula and Miramar Beach is back here and then Santa Rosa Beach is further back. But um, because we're surrounded by this cooler water, um, weather coming across from the other side of the bay, uh, it's, it, uh, is that right? I think I'm all backwards. Yes, I am all backwards. Choctawachi <laughs> is north and the thing is to the west of us. There we go. And Fort Walton Beach is over there. Fort Walton Beach and Niceville, which is on the other side of the Choctawachi Bay, um, get the weather and it'll stop right over the water because it's so cool. So anyway, it's, it's, it's a good idea. You'll, you know, if you've lived in an area for a while, you'll notice there's peculiarities in your weather and notice which direction things just typically don't make it to you. And you can kind of sometimes play those odds a little bit uh, based on 
um, what you've seen. Our cabin in Arkansas is the same way. It's in the middle of some mountains. Things stop before it gets over those mountains. And uh, so anyway, it's just something that fascinates me. So I'm exhausted again. <laughs> let's, uh, let's call this the end of the garden tour. If, you, if you're just stumbling along finding this channel, please uh, subscribe. If you have subscribed and watching and just coming back watching another video, uh, thank you so much for that too. Uh, all these things help. Click the thumbs up on this video and share on your social media. And uh, yeah, have a blessed day.